Okay, we're live. Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining on another Pushing Film live stream. And uh, thank you for watching if you're watching this post stream. Today, I've got something new and a little bit interesting to try. It's actually a variation of a previous series of live streams that I've done, which I called Image Critiques. So in those live streams, I just went over a few images that I had taken, critiqued them, sort of talked about what could be improved, and then also went over the photos that I'd uh, found from other people, whether it was online through Instagram or something like that, where we just uh, use that opportunity to have a conversation, critique images, what works, what went into the thought process, what could be improved, and so on. But this one I'm quite excited about, something a little bit different. It's a slight variation of that whereby I focus on some of my own imagery and also include not only the successful photos uh, or whether or not they were successful, but some of the images sort of taken around that in the context of like a contact sheet, for example, whereby uh, this is gonna be about street photography on film. And let's say I was out shooting a bit of street. I take you through some of the images I took during that street photography session maybe talk about which ones work the best, what led to taking that image. And I'm just hoping that that can sort of help anyone else out there into looking at their own thought process, especially you guys who shoot street photography, maybe just thinking about that sort of stuff. I don't know if it's interesting and I'm a bit experimental with this. So let me know your thoughts. What do you think of this idea? I think it could be something that I would maybe do continuously if it works out. But just checking through on the stream statistics here everything's looking pretty good let me know if it's all good on your end but just to kind of give you an idea of what i'm talking about here i'm just going to switch to my lightroom view and what i've picked out is all right i've got 39 photos here and for example these four or or let's say actually no this entire set of images here was all taken on the same day on the same roll of film that's not the entire role of film because, you know, not the whole f uh, role of film was necessarily street photography, but this is a session, for example, within that role of film. And what you get to look at here is a series of images during that street photography session, including not only the shots that maybe worked out or that I posted or whatever, but some of the shots around them. And you can kind of look at that and uh, just sort of critique it maybe for yourself. Feel free to chip in in the live comments, which um, I'll, I'll try and check every now and then. And yeah, if you are watching this post stream, please be aware that sometimes these can get a little bit long and ranty, but I'm going to try and keep it as succinct as I can. Feel free to speed it up if you want to. I do that all the time. But yeah, I'm hoping that this goes well. I'm really sort of experimenting with this live stream, but let's jump right in. Let's take a look at these images that I pulled up here. This was all on a day out at the beach in St. Kilda shooting a roll of Kodak Vision 250D in the Leica M4, which is what I was still shooting at the time. And it was just a great day for photography because the weather was really hot. This was, I think, November last year. So this is the oldest uh, bunch of photos I have in this, this video. But it was a really hot day. The beaches were super packed. Lockdowns had ended not too long ago. And because of that, everyone was out in full force at the beach having a good time, lots of great colors. That's what drew me there. And even though it was really hot and uncomfortable, I sort of pushed through and hung out for about an hour and took a few images, including these. So let's say we're looking at the very first two images of the roll here with these two images. I hope this is all working out properly, but uh, all right, let's go back to the grid and maybe just focus on these just to sort of give you an example of what I mean with this whole thing. So this, ignoring the light leaks here, this was the first uh, image on the roll, so there's a bit of light leak from loading the, the film. But this is an example of something I'm trying to practice a lot with my street photography. And I don't know if you guys do this too, but when I started off as, with shooting street, what I would find is that I would often just take one image and then have this self-consciousness of having been seen by the subjects and want to quickly move on. That's something I'm trying to practice not doing as much and really trying to work the scene, having more awareness of what worked out in that first image, for example, what could be even better in any consecutive images. Doesn't always work out. Sometimes I take a bunch of photos and none of them are really any better than the first one, but it's all in the name of that sort of practice, that ability to stay within the scene, not just have that anxiety of just taking one shot 
feeling like you need to run away, but putting more thought into it. I'm not great at it, but through doing this and maybe even through talking about it right now, I'm hope to, I hope to improve in that aspect of uh, what I really call working the scene, something I've heard a fair bit and something I think I see in the contact sheets of other photographers and uh, even in the way I've seen other street photographers work or the way they've spoken about their process. But yeah, looking at these two images, the first one I took was this one on the left here. And even though I think that, you know, the lady at least here probably saw me take the photo, maybe not. To be honest, they looked like they were in their own world here um, with the daughter taking a photo of the mum, presumably, and the son here who was part of the group just sort of sitting there looking bored. And that's what attracted me to me to that scene, that whole dynamic between the three of them, the colors, the, you know, just the general uh, scene at the beach here. But then what I found after, as soon as I clicked this one is I think I got too much of this context here. I did want to get a bit of that background showing the context, but there might have been a little bit too much in terms of people there and uh, also the composition, uh, you know, I wasn't too sure about. So then I took the second photo here and personally, I feel this one works a little bit better whereby there isn't as much distraction going on in the corner compared to that first one. I still have that sort of triangular composition I was going for. There's a little bit of context with the characters in the background here to set the story. And the other advantage is I got a little bit more of the kid here looking bored doing whatever he was doing, <laughs> as well as what was going on between these two characters. So just in doing that, I feel like it's not only good practice in you know, improving your street photography and something I'm always trying to do, but also resulting in potentially the more a stronger image, maybe if you just stick with the scene and work it. And that's going to really be my whole takeaway from this video. So be prepared to sort of, you know, get the gist of that throughout this. But that's really what I'm trying to reinforce here through doing this contact sheets series. And I hope that that rings true with you guys whether or not you're already doing this, just to get us thinking more about that thought process when you're out on the street, when you're out in a dynamic environment like this. Similar story here. I don't really feel like one shot is necessarily too much better than the other. I think because I took this one first and I thought this guy didn't really contribute much to the scene, I recomposed a little bit more off to the right to put this kid in the thirds of the image. And what was going on here is he was just sort of... Uh, complaining or begging to his parents about something maybe he wanted ice cream I really can't remember or I don't think I actually heard but yeah same thing here I just stuck it out and uh, you know maybe out of the two this might be slightly better because of the gestures in his hand you can kind of see what's going on if you didn't if you weren't there and you didn't know this one would give you more of a story potentially because uh, you know the face isn't enough the strained face of the kid might not be enough but when you have the hand gestures here and the parents actually engaging with the son and looking at him, it might have uh, been the slightly better image out of the two. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Peter, hello from Slovakia. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for joining. And uh, someone saying that right one is great uh, on the previous uh, image. Yeah, thank you. Um, I was pretty happy with this roll of film. So again, same thing here. I took this image on the left first. I uh, wasn't too set on the composition, so I thought I'd take another one in case the second one worked out better. Uh, the way his head was blocking off the people behind him, it was distracting a little bit from him, making him blend into that background a bit. So I just stepped a little bit to the left, a bit closer, tried to create a little bit of negative space behind him as well as I could. And now he's sort of framed by people and um, there's a bit of an extra element in the other half of the scene here. So I personally think that one on the right works better once again. And that's why I stuck it out and took the second image. Same thing here, bike riders, I clicked the shutter, noticed the bike riders rode into the shot, waited a little bit, stepped a little bit closer. You can kind of see here from the framing, uh, these are uncropped images. I stepped a little bit closer, filled the frame a little bit more, took the second image, and that's the one I like more. You can really get a better sense of this guy's gesture, which is really cool. Uh, his friends just sort of hanging out there. Uh, you don't get those bike riders there. You get a bit more of the actual context of the beach behind him. Uh, Yuan Farrell asking how long do you think there was between the first shot and the second one? Honestly, in most cases, it's a matter of a second or two, uh, especially with this one. It could have been maybe two seconds, three seconds. Uh, in the case of most of these, probably something similar. 
because usually when there's something like that going on, the moment's lost pretty quickly. So uh, that's one of the advantages of, I guess, shooting film, maybe for one, you don't get tempted to chimp, whether, you know, you, you can still not chimp on digital, but also having the rangefinder zone focusing gives you that advantage and uh, metering by by eye beforehand, the light isn't changing, so I can just quickly take a second shot within a couple of seconds or even a second if necessary. This one's a little bit different. There's a bit longer between the two frames and it's not necessarily that one worked out better than the other, but this is an interesting example of say, I have this scene here, took the shot, but then noticed within this photo, there was another opportunity alone with this kid in the background here. So I took this initial photo of a more complex scene with multiple characters in it. I really like what's going on with this guy, the kids here, this person, someone there. And uh, then I saw this guy next to this interesting boat with the colors and the palm tree. So I actually walked over and took another shot, which was a segue from that first one and resulted in an equally, in my eyes, you know, good image within that, that scene, I guess. So it's a scene within a scene. Sometimes you have to look for what's in your frame and what could potentially make for additional images that aren't necessarily like the first one. I hope that makes sense. And Michaela Crabtree in the comments. Hi, hello, thanks for joining. All right, so let's go to another little set here. So this one was at a barber shop shortly after the lockdown here in Melbourne ended. And I was out shooting some street. This one's on a roll of Kodak Vision 500T. And you may have seen this in the vlog, which was actually a point of view street photography vlog I put out for this roll of film and others. But basically there was a line of people waiting at the barbershop because barbershops were closed during the months lock long lockdown we had here in Melbourne. And when they finally opened, people lined up and that made for a great sort of little storytelling opportunity there with the with the scene at this barbershop. And things were sort of dying down at the end of the day. You can sort of tell because of the golden light. This was before sunset and there was not as many people waiting, but it created for interesting scenes because of the light shining into the barbershop here. So what I initially saw was that scene took this image on the top left here. And then I really liked what was going on with this guy being covered in this little shaft of light within the barbershop. Kind of reminded me of um, an Alex Webb photo. <laughs> he took a barbershop, not anything like it, obviously, but just in my mind, it sort of encouraged me to look inside. And again, you have one scene, which can lead to another scene. If you stay there, stick with it. And then I took this image on the top right. And I noticed that I also had this ability to put myself in the mirror in the background. So I'll just go a bit closer onto that image. Maybe I'll just take these tabs off and do a lights out so you guys have a better view. But yeah, uh, I got myself in the mirror. I took this composition. I was trying to get a little bit of the story with these signs here saying, take a number, hand sanitizing, whatever. The guy wearing the mask, covered in light. I thought it was really nice, but then I didn't just stick with that image and move on. I decided to, to take more. So I moved a little bit closer with this one tried to fill the frame a little bit more, get rid of some of these distractions of the signage and chair here, which weren't really contributing some of that stuff on the door and created a slightly neater frame here, which is probably, I think, one of my favorite shots from this little series. But then I also took an alternative composition just in case maybe this one wasn't the best composition. I recomposed to get rid of that sign on the left and have him here in the lower left third and include this other signage on the right. Now, I'm not sure how much I like this stuff on the right, but it's an alternative option. And there's really nothing to lose by sticking around, wasting a few extra frames. It's really not too bad. And getting the image that you really would be happy for uh, or with, sorry, as opposed to maybe just taking one shot and uh, wondering, should I have stuck around and taken more? And someone asking um, the Alex Webb image from Istanbul. Yeah, that's the one. It's one of my favorite photos from that book. But yeah, it's something about barbershops that always reminds me of Alex Webb. Michaela, I love photography. I want to be a photographer. I'm still practicing. I take pictures at my church. Yeah, that's a good way to practice, actually. If you take pictures at somewhere that you spend a lot of time or you go to regularly, it can be really good to sort of hone your skills and at least get used to the camera working with difficult light. So that's, that's a really good idea. All right. So going back to the grid here, I've got a series of images from Sydney when I was there briefly in uh, December last year. So last month, really. And this is a scenario where I took a bunch of photos. Again, 
wasn't really worried about wasting a few frames of film, but I didn't really end up with anything that was that great in my eyes at least. So I had these images where I spotted these two characters sort of mirroring each other, the way he was looking down this way and he was looking away. And uh, I took that shot. I didn't like the bus in the background, a lot of these distractions. Um, then the bus moved a little bit. So I tried to snap a shot when he was in this negative space, looking back towards this gentleman. I thought maybe that would be interesting. What I really liked at the time was these newspapers he had both in his jacket pocket and in his hand. But I really don't know if I did that justice in the way I composed this scene. But anyway, again, just sort of showing that you sometimes it is worth sticking around, working the scene a little bit. The bus moved on and this other guy got up, walked towards the frame, took another shot and then another shot here as this guy gestured with this sort of arm, his hand placed on his, um, on his face there. I thought maybe that would be interesting. This might be one of the strongest images in the series or this one I'm really not too sure but I'm really not too stoked on any of them to be honest but I still don't regret having stuck there work the scene a little bit because it's it's good practice it's good practice for the next time this happens uh yeah I mean let me know what do you guys think do you do you do this anyone here who's a street photographer if you're watching this after the live stream I'd love to hear your thoughts on what your thought process is when you're out there and you spot an interesting scene like maybe this one or something else do you stick around and the last image I took here, I tried to quickly zone focus closer, but it didn't really work out at all. Anyway, let's look at uh, maybe these two. This is sort of similar to what I spoke about before. Having one opportunity with a scene here, lots of interesting characters and color, trying to compose with a, a bit of the, uh, the third here, the left third of the image, creating one photograph almost or section, and then another photograph or section in this right third. But then also waiting, sticking around in anticipation of a more interesting moment where this guy actually jumped off the, the railing. And then this guy turning around, looking towards him. He's looking towards him. It's a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more interesting. So I'm really glad that I actually uh, stuck it out with this scene here and took that second frame. Because in, in my eyes, it works out a lot better than the one on the left and just adds a lot more of a you know dynamic aspect to it. And I really love the way the light was falling on this um, whole scene as well. So this was Kodak Portra, I think, in the Leica MA. Yeah, just a, this is one of these spots where I try and go every now and then because whenever it's a nice hot day, there's always really interesting characters, lots of interesting photo opportunities. A lot of young guys and girls go there and hang out and they drink and jump off the jetty and um you know dance and whatever so it's always really dynamic lots of uh, character and i think it's a great place uh, or type of place at least to go and take documentary photos like this so i always um end up shooting at least a roll when i go here anyway let's go to another bunch of photos from this same pier so this is a longer series this is the one from the cover image and Let's put them in survey view. Okay. So here, yeah, this is all from the same session. I've got the same bunch. Of, this is from a different day, same location, different day, uh, but same type of characters here. The young guys, all the young people hanging out, partying, jumping, drinking. And I just sort of stuck in this one spot trying different compositions, different angles, as you can see here, and then lots of different things going on, moving back a little bit sometimes, trying to get these sort of compositions back to this spot on the railing. Um, I tried a vertical composition here, but then the thing started to get a little bit more interesting as I sort of stuck around observing the mannerisms and behaviors of all the different characters within the scene. Sometimes that's something I find worth doing. If you just sort of come and take the scene on face value, snap a shot. You don't really get an idea of each character within there, what they're up to, what they're about to do, and then allowing you to anticipate what's going on. So with this shot, I started to notice this guy being, you know, the happy, jovial character. They were passing around drinks to each other. He was really engaging with everyone. I noticed that these guys were taking turns jumping off the railing into the water, and then there was some activity going on down there. 
So I just continued to take shots. This one didn't really work out too well. I was trying to get a bit of that splash. This one I was trying to get this guy's, you know, nice bright red, you know, basketball jersey. Again, didn't really work out. Another shot here. Um, composition wasn't too good. The, I think I was shooting 35 mil here. Might have been a bit better with a 28 to get a little bit more context. And trying to fix the composition up a little bit here, creating this leading line in the right third of the image. And I was really setting myself up for what was to come, which was this image, which ultimately after I clicked it, I knew I'd be happy with, or I was hoping I'd be happy with. And that's the one that I ended up leaving the scene on. I was like, cool, that's it. I got the image I wanted. So it took, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 previous shots to get to the shot that I wanted. Now, just because we're shooting film, it doesn't necessarily mean it's not worth sticking with the scene, working it to get the shot you want. If you feel like it's a powerful enough scene that you're working with, that's the ideology that I'm trying to sort of, um, you know, work with here and discuss with you guys, if you have any opinions on that. And with this one, I was ultimately the happiest with because all these elements came together this guy was handing a, a drink to someone else. He was gesturing, I think, towards him. Uh, you've got, you know, someone giving someone a piggyback back here. These guys are watching the jumpers. You've got this interaction going on here with this guy handing a beer to someone's arm, just poking through the scene here. That's one of my favorite parts of this, the element, you know, uh, of the photo here. And it all just really came together with the guy caught mid jump right on the horizon line just tying it all together. So is it an amazing image? Maybe not necessarily, but it is the best out of those series, in my opinion. One, when are you reading the scene? Do you hide your camera? Uh, I don't necessarily hide the camera. I don't always have it up to my eye though. I might have it just sort of down in my hands, observing with my eyes only, and then bringing the camera up to my eye in anticipation of taking a shot which sometimes I don't end up doing. I bring the camera back down, uh, but at least having it ready there. All right. So uh, thanks for bearing with me, guys. And uh, I'm just going to go through another couple of photos here from, again, it's the same location, but a different day. This is on Fuji Superior 400. I took the one snap on the left here, and I think someone walked into the scene just at the last moment holding this towel. And at the time, I was worried that that would distract a little bit. So I, I stuck there, even though I was actually rather close to these people, they were pretty oblivious to me or not really uh, caring too much. I was shooting on 28 mil and I stepped a tiny bit, maybe sideways or whatever I did. I don't think I recomposed too much, but I just took this second shot here where someone else sort of walked into the scene here. This guy might've been a few seconds apart, but basically he created this interesting pairing here. So you've got this pairing of the two characters at the front. And now I think this right hand image becomes more powerful because there's another pairing there and another pairing that walked into the scene in this rear left part of the image. So with that, I sort of created a sort of a triangle of pairings here. And then if you really kind of look, you've got these two girls walking in the background, something I wasn't necessarily aware of at the time. I was aware of only these two and these two, but a lot of the time you might look back at images, uh, you know, on the contact sheet or whatever and find little things that pop out at you. And I just really like the gesture and the expression a little bit more in this image on the right. The light's really nice. I'm happy with the composition. Could have been maybe a little bit closer, something I'm still working on trying to get close to 28 mil. But yeah, again, I'm ultimately a bit happier with the second image. I'm glad I stuck there and took that second photo. All right, guys, so this is about to sum things up. Podcast, uh, sorry, um, live stream is approaching half an hour, which is where I wanted to sort of uh, cap it off. So we're on the last set of images in this so-called contact sheet. They're a little bit out of order here, actually. I'm not sure why, but um, let me just fix that up. This one would have been first because I was approaching down the jetty and uh, just sort of noticed that things were going on back here. That's the first image. And then I really... Um, hurried over to see what was going on in this part of the jetty of the pier this is a different pier actually it's not the same one as before 
but I do really like these waterside environments. One of my favorite places to shoot for some reason. I don't know why. Um, could be because I spent a lot of time as a kid on jetties like this and, uh, you know, fishing and whatnot. So, yeah, I just found that these, um, these people here, this couple, were creating a really interesting scene, uh, embracing and hugging and whatever. And I tried to work them into the scene in the way that I also captured a bit of context in the background. So there was this image first. I really liked the wind that was going on, blowing her hair and creating a little bit more, uh, you know, movement. The fisherman in the background and you've got these two characters here. So not a bad image, but again, I tried to stick there. I really felt nervous that they had seen me and uh, I know that feeling and just sort of wanted to leave it at that and run away, but I didn't. I stuck it out and uh, took these additional images. So first one was pretty close. For some reason, I think I stepped back. Unless these are out of order, I probably started with this one because I think these images aren't quite in order. Uh, but yeah, you've got these two obviously getting closer. And then this one, I think I took another step closer from the initial one. And they were really on the edge of the frame but I think they come into better focus. And I really filled the frame a little bit better with this shot here, which is ultimately the one I think that I like the most out of them all. And I like also that these fishermen are mid cast and that this guy walked over with his dog, which is interacting with another dog, which is next to a guy who's taking a photo of his partner, presumably. And it just really filled the scene in a way that I was quite happy with, but I still didn't leave the scene. I stuck around took a few more unless like I'm saying these might not be in the correct order but obviously there were quite a few shots here that uh you know varied a little bit in composition and what was going on because a lot can happen in a matter of a few seconds so yeah this guy with the dog was still back here at this point um in this one he wasn't there at all so I'm really not sure what the chronological order was but yeah I think you guys get the point uh work the scene stick with it don't be afraid to waste a little bit of film. Let me just switch back to a normal view. And, and I think through doing this, your street photography will improve. I know that mine has ever since trying to take this mentality on board. And of course, it still requires a lot of time and practice. But in time, you will notice that you'll kind of feel more at home right when you're in the midst of things and um, be more, I think, aware of your surroundings. All right, so I'm just going to look through some of the live uh, stream comments before wrapping this up. Is there a way to spit out contact sheets in Lightroom for print? Yeah, so there's actually, if you have the full version of Lightroom, you have the print module. So actually, um, you, can, you can't really see it here because my face is probably in the way, but up this top right section, you've got library, develop, map, book, slideshow, print is the second last module normally underneath where my webcam is there. And uh, that's not on all versions of Lightroom, but that's a really great way to set up prints and create contact sheets, which you can either print to JPEG, which is what I use for the thumbnail, or to do actual prints. So I hope that answers that question. Um, all right. Hi, Hashem, love your content. Any plans for a photo walk in Melbourne? Yeah, definitely something coming up, hopefully. Uh, join the Discord server if you want information on that. Uh, I'll try and also announce it in other outlets but if you go on the discord server i've got a link to that in the description of this video that's where we have a channel i've made a channel there for meetups where people can organize meetups and i can organize meetups in melbourne we've already done one through discord which was uh, about a month ago it was really fun in the city walked around shot some street so yeah check that out mitchell anderson have you ever been confronted negatively while taking street photography uh, maybe in the past it hasn't been for a long time but Initially, it probably happened because of how nervous I probably was. And I think the more nervous you look and come across and act, the more suspicious you might look to people. So they might get the wrong idea. Whereas if you build that confidence and walk around knowing that you're not necessarily doing anything wrong, that will be perceived by people and they'll be less likely to really act react negatively, at least in my experience. Of course, there's always a chance that someone still might react negatively, but you really have to try and read the scene and think about, is this person likely to react negatively? At least in the case of these teenagers, they honestly did not give a crap what I was doing. They were all in a good mood. 
and I could sort of feel that. So you really have to gauge it. But um, yeah, I have had people, for example, in the past say, hey, did you just take my photo? What's going on? And I really just try and be friendly about it as much as possible and say, oh yeah, you know, I was um, just a street photographer. It's really like what's going on in the light and whatever it might be. Or um, someone might just give you a funny look after you snap their photo. And I usually just smile and wave and then sort of walk. And that usually extinguishes the situation before it even turns into anything else. But I guess there's a lot more to say on that because it is a complex topic of its own. Something I could probably do a a video um, or live stream on in the future. Um, Peter, yes, I wanted to ask this too. Yeah, so it's always something in the back of my mind. And I know what it's like when I started off shooting street, I would shoot from across the street and still feel um, nervous and like I you know, had to run away after taking a shot. So it takes a lot of time. It's taken me years to get to the point of um, shooting like this, which is still no way near the potential to really get in amongst people and have that, you know, that fearlessness. Jen, hey, uh, yeah, I made it for once. Nice. Thanks for joining, Jen. What time is it in, uh, in Canada, right? Must be pretty late there. As someone new to photography, it does make me wonder. Yeah, so Mitchell, I hope that answered the question a little bit. When I was new, I I hated the idea of street photography. I didn't even do it. I actually had to force myself into it. Uh, Mick, I guess I'm late. Yeah, we're going to wrap things up after going through some of these um, comments, unfortunately. Mick Millman, if you're in Los Angeles, come take my class and make real contact prints in the darkroom. That would be amazing, man. I'd love to. I'd love to really continue this journey of improvement. And uh, I do like making real contact prints in the dark room. I've only ever done it with black and white. I've got some sheets of film set aside that I'm planning to make some contact sheets from in the dark room soon, which I just set up in my bathroom. But I would love to visit the US someday as well. I've never been there. All right, Mitchell Anderson, awesome. Thanks for the advice. No worries. And uh, Jen, it's 6.32. Okay, cool. That's not too bad. So it's at a good time. All right, guys, I think I'm going to wrap things up there. Please let me know what you think of this new format. I'm not abandoning the uh, image critiques just yet because I really enjoy critiquing other people's images, even though I don't really see myself as anyone necessarily quote unquote worthy of um, critiquing. But then the way I think about it, there's no harm just discussing it. And uh, it's something I enjoy doing because through looking at other people's photos, I learn a bit more myself and then take those critiques on board the next time out sh- I'm out shooting, if that makes any sense. So what I'm actually thinking of doing is if anyone is interested in that, what I used to do is just jump on Instagram and choose random images that were tagged with the Pushing Film account. I could still do that. But what I'm thinking to do is have people submit their images in the Discord server. I proposed this idea in the lobby channel there. And then I can sort of choose some of those images that people have voluntarily put out or maybe even contact sheets or both and then go through some of those during a live stream. That would be really fun to do. I know it's sort of probably been done before and I'm a big fan of channels like the Candid Frame. If any of you guys watch that, you'll know that what um, Ibadio Next on the Candid Frame does is pretty similar to that. And he's been doing it amazingly well for a long time, but it's because I admire that process so much. I think it's a great learning experience to, to watch the Candid Frame that I would sort of like to do that in this context of film photography. So let me know what you think. Jump on the Discord server. It's where I want to sort of continue discussions like this. And uh, Mick saying, I'll add, there's nothing wrong with finding an approach to street photography that works for your personality, comfort level, and aesthetics. Absolutely. My journey through street photography has gone through a lot of different phases. So that's absolutely true. Anna Denara, I'm late. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, you can always, I'm going to leave this online so you can go back and watch it from the beginning if you can be bothered. Um, Jen, the Candid Frame is amazing. Everyone should listen to it. Amazing podcast. Probably one of the best long-running podcasts around. But he also does have that YouTube channel with the user submissions from Flickr. And that's really worth checking out if you like this sort of content. Um, Negative Feedback does a great review style as well. Yeah, okay. I haven't actually checked that out. I don't watch really much or enough of Negative Feedback. It's kind of hard to keep up with everything. Um, Abdullah, thank you. Thank you for watching. Yeah, so let me know what you think. I've got a link to the Discord server in the video description. I've got a link to the Pushing Film and my Instagram, social pages, whatever, if you feel like following there. Uh, I hope this was somewhat insightful. I appreciate all the support. And uh, on the last video, especially, which was the Zeiss 50 Sonar review, 
I'm going to have more content about the Leica MA. A lot of people have been asking me about that and the transition from the M4, which honestly wasn't a very big transition. But yeah, thank you again for all the support and I'll catch you on the next video or live stream. Have a good day or night, guys.